Hello, welcome back to the Cricket Nerds. We are talking today about India versus Australia. It's the preview that everyone's been waiting for. So just because of that, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new. We've passed 900 subscribers, so thank you so much for that. And we are just one step closer to that 1,000 subscribers, which we know we'll get there soon. So just keep telling your friends about us. So anyway, let's get into it. Um, India and Australia, they're playing four test matches. Um, it's always a good series, um, the Border Gavaskar Trophy. Um, James, let's kick us off. What do you think of the Indian test squad? Um, I think it's very strong and I'm really excited to see it. Uh, I think we could see some short tests this mm. this series. I think everybody, the, the conversation before um a, you know a big ma- a big series like this tends to be about what pitches are going to get produced because that will really influence the results and the advantages that each team can uh, can have so in india the reason it's so difficult to tour for overseas uh players is a lot of the time they will produce pitches that are and naturally they have pitches that are friendlier to spin bowlers And Mm. growing up in the subcontinent, a lot of the players are used to that. They are very adept to playing spin and they are also adept to using spin uh, as the bowlers. And Mm. looking at that India squad with Ravichandran Ashwin, Ravindra Jadeja and uh, Kuldeep Yadav and who's the other one? Aksar Patel. Yeah. More of like... (laughs) the greatest spinners that are alive right now um i would be absolutely terrified if i showed up to uh nagpur the first day and i saw a dry pitch as an australian you know that that would be absolutely horrible so that's what i think india should produce i'm i'm hoping that it's not like an absolute you know like falling apart on day one type of pitch. I hope it is still going to produce five days because I'm really excited for this series. But yeah, um, as as far as spinners and spinning conditions, I'm I'm expecting that to be the case, and I'm quite excited to see it. I guess it has for all... Australia, they they will have seen a lot of Ashwin and Jadeja and Axel Patel. They would know what they're getting when it comes to Indian spin, but when it comes to the batting. I want to hear your thoughts about this bench because when it comes to the batting, there's a few enigmas in there. There's a few newish names to to those Australians. Yeah, I think um, for me, the only one spot that's really up for debate is that number five spot. Mm. Who fills in there? How that's going to work? Because, um, yeah, as it stands, um, I think that... Shutman Gill and Rohit Sharma nailed on as the openers. I think there's there's pretty much no question about that. I think there's a big question um, about that. <laughs> oh, I think Shutman Gill and Rohit Sharma are going to definitely open. I, I I think with the with the form that Shutman Gill's been in, I I can't see him not opening the the, the batting. Three being Pajara, four being Kohli. Then you've got your five and your six. There's a batter that's missing because Shireyas I is not going to be fit for the first test. Like India have come out and said he's not going to be, be fit for the for the first test. So are we going to see Suri Kumar Yadav? Potentially he goes in there. Um your number six and seven spot, I think that's a bit more nailed on. I'd probably expect to see Kara Hall in there. Um also taking the gloves. I I, I don't think we'll see Kara Hall opening. I just I I just can't see that happening. Um and then yeah, after that, we're, we're, we're into the all-rounders and bowlers. James, it sounds like you have a different uh, viewpoint to, to, to me on this, though. Yeah, yeah I just, I, I think, as much as I would like to see Rohit and Gill opening, um, I definitely don't think it's as nailed on as you're, you're saying, because Kale Rahul is um, the vice-captain of, of this India side. He is, like, he's a trusted opening batter. Um, and I think they would be more likely to go for Kale Rahul and Rohit Sharma. And I would, yeah, I would expect that to happen and kind of hope for Gil to be in there. 
Um, mm. I, I do. I absolutely agree that number five slot is the most interesting one because, um, yeah, like I, I personally would would like to see. Uh, I don't know. I'd, I'd like to see a Shrika Barrett get a go because I think he's been really good domestically. Um, I think he he actually deserves the go more so than most other people. But you know, it would be absolutely perfect at number five, who hasn't been picked for this squad for an inexplicable reason. Sarfaraz <laughs> Khan. I had no idea you were going to mention him today. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, nobody saw that coming. Didn't expect but that at all. I'm going to harp on about him every single time at India play. Um, but yeah, I I think like as soon as um, what's his face. Um, what's he called? Shreyas Pant. Uh, yeah, Richard Pant. Shre- Shreyas Iyer. As soon oh, as I was ruled out specifically, I think I would. I, I just I would have called up Safras Khan saying, "Hey, mate, sorry, first of all, for not picking you the first time round because you're averaging like eighty a uh, strike rate of eighty. You're mm. too good to not be in this squad. Get yourself down it. That's what I'd be thinking." Don't know what you think, Zach. Well, I do think Safras Khan. I'm sure he did have a look in. I think he deserves to have a look in. I just wonder if maybe India's strict fitness regimes maybe cost him his spot potentially. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure, but I do think the players they've got as backups kind of fit the role well. Um, I don't see Carol Hall taking the gloves uh, as the wicketkeeper because. The the big void for them is the number six slot of Rishabh Pant. Uh, they can always pick a, a young batter to bat at five, or even have Rishabh Pant as five and a younger batter at six. So losing Shreyas Iyer, who is like their next middle order cert, I guess he's not having him means there's going to be two inexperienced players in that middle order who Australia will look to target and they will do the whole Australian sledging sort of thing as they do to those players um because there'll be a lot of pressure on them because if if pajara goes and Kohli goes and their their openers don't get many runs then it's a lot of pressure on that inexperienced mm. uh, middle order and i guess they'll be ha- thankful that they've got ravi ashwin and jadeja to come who are also very good batsmen uh, <clears throat> but yeah i i don't really know who they pick i can see maybe shubman gill um, Carol Hall opening Shubman Gill at number five maybe uh, because he's been in such good form as Benji was saying I'd love to see Surya Kumar Yadav get a, a play it's just whether they're going to pick Ishan Kishan who's unknown really to test cricket and Shrika Barra who's done very well domestically whether they pick one of them mm-hmm. either way we'll be excited to see them but if they're going to perform still to see whether that's actually going to happen or not um, I have a question for you boys um, seam bowlers, you know me. Seam, but I, I I love talking about the seam bowlers. That's that, that's my my bread and butter. Notable absence in Bumrah because he, he's injured, and it's been the case for some time that India are really missing out on him. Mm. Is it a dead cert that we're going to see Mohammad Shami and Mohammad Siraj as that spear attack in the seam bowling, or are we going to see the return of Jadev Unadkat, who's been doing? fantastically in the domestic game what are your thoughts on that i I think think... you go all right uh i I was gonna say i I think a lot of it depends on the pitches because they might not even play more than two seamers oh Uh, yeah i'm i'm thinking there's only going to be two seamers for sure yeah but you know you never know i i honestly think that india could produce an absolute green seamer and still give Australia a run for their money, as good as Australia seamers are. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I think Mohammed Siraj and Mohammed Shami are first choice, like you said. But I would be looking at Umesh Yadav potentially, um, because I, I think he is a you know, chronically underrated bowler, especially in Red Bull. But yeah, Anadkat, I'd be really excited to see him. I, I think the story of Anadkat is what gets me the most because yeah. um, I can remember him putting out on Twitter like you know, a fair few months ago now, maybe even a year ago. He said, like, I miss you, Red Ball. I will I will see you again soon. And yeah. he's absolutely grinded in this Ranji trophy season and um you know the past few months and he's got himself back in this test squad. So I would I would really like it if he then got 
you know, a showing in one of these test matches, took a five for, and a movie was made about him. That's <laughs> that's what I want to see. What about you, Zach? I can see India picking a nadcap based on the fact that it's the point of difference. Mohamed Shami and Umesh Yadav, the fairly straightforward bowlers. I know Mohamed Shami has a very good record um, away from home um, because he's a very good seam bowler and a very skillful seam bowler. He also does have a good record at, at home in India, but I see Mohamed Siraj has got that extra bit of difference. He gets mm. fired up if the batsmen get on top. He's His ability to, like you saw when he played against Australia in his debut series, how awesome he was in Australia. And I'm sure he'll be the same again if he was to be picked. So for me, he's got to play, especially in that first game. Yes, they might rotate it, but he's got to play in the first one. And then an adcat with that left arm provides the other point of difference. And they're missing that, their main point of difference, who has always been the point of difference in Bumra, um, just from his action alone. So I think having that left arm option is going to be a, a big one for, for India. So I would definitely pick a NADCAT um, to kind of give that extra extra variety. Um, but I think overall, as we've discussed, other than the spin bowling and the top order batsmen, there are a few weaknesses in that Indian squad, um, especially in that middle order, which Australia can exploit. But overall, it's looking like a pretty strong squad. Mm. And a lot of Indians watch this channel, so make sure you leave who you think the first 11 should be in the comments below because we'd love to hear it. Um, um, having said that about India being a very strong squad, um, this Australian squad that is going out to India um, is looking really good and it's looking like a real complete unit. Um, I don't know about you, but I've recently watched the Test Series 2 on Amazon Prime. Not a sponsor, wish it was. <laughs> but the one thing that annoys me about that TV show is it makes me like the Australian national team at cricket. <laughs> it's it's it, it's frustrating, but it makes them personal. So it's not great with the home ashes coming up. But having watched that and getting to know more about this Australian team, um, I'm actually quite excited to see how they go in structuring themselves in this series. Um, we're coming into a series with probably the highest in form Australian team I've seen. You've got Warner and Kawaja who look like the complete package opening the innings. Kawaja who in the tour of Pakistan uh, last year or the year before was phenomenal and is a fantastic player of spin and enjoys playing on those dry pitches. You've then got the two best test, test batsmen in the world, arguably in Labashane and Steve Smith following that up. An informed Travis Head is really scary, and Alex Carey is a great player. The only issue for um, Australia that I can see for me is Cameron Green, because Cameron Green is such an important cog to them. He's that all-rounder, he's a fantastic bat, and he can hold his own as a bowler as well. And if he's not fit... And I know there's still a question mark around him, whether he's fit for the first test. I think Josh Hazelwood, for sure, has been ruled out the first test. But mm. if Cameron Green is not fit, it's going to really mess with that balance. So um, with Australia, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, they've got two part-time spinners in Labashain and Smith. But do we think they're going to go with a three-spinner attack, a two-spinner attack? What, what, what are your thoughts on them? Because I think they're, they're top five and six. That's pretty nailed on with the exception of Cameron Green, but it's going to be their bowling makeup that's going to be the real talking point for Australia. Uh, yeah, I, th I think that's a, it's definitely an interesting question. I would do want to go back to their batting lineup because I okay. think there is more to talk about there. But um, yeah, I think I would see them going with two spinners. I don't see them going with more than that because um, you don't want to go too away, too far away from what your strengths are. And Australia's strengths are definitely their seam bowling. And somebody like Pat Cummins has the ability to take wickets no matter where he is. He is the best seamer in the world at the moment, in my opinion, um, yeah. and has been for a little while. Um, I think Nathan Lyon is going to be very scary for for the Indian batters. But um, yeah, it's they then have like quite a few choices to make. Um yeah, they might go for Mitch Swepson. Oh, I don't, never know how, know how to say his name. Um, <laughs> You're fine, Mitchell Swepson, yeah. That was You're good fine, enough. Yeah. 
uh yeah he he might debut for or not not debut but play not for debut, them yeah. um and he's been okay but i'd say he's been quite inconsistent as a leg spinner for them so far mm. um somebody i am quite interested in is todd murphy another yes. off spinner yes um glad you brought him up you know what bench what are your thoughts on todd well, he's very unknown, never played internationally before. This is the first time that he's been called up to the Australian national side. Um, he impressed me in the Big Bash. So he played for Sydney Sixers. He's only about 22 years old, left-hand batter, but quite a good bowler. And he bowled some really crucial overs in, in some really crucial games. And I think he took maybe like nine wickets across six games that he played. But one of them, he took a really good three for. Um, he just seems to have real control over the ball. Um, his ball flight's phenomenal. Um, he is young, though. I don't know whether he's going to get a shot this time. He seems like he's almost been rushed into the Australian side. He's not like done his hard yards in the domestic game. I think he's only played like um, maybe like less than ten. Yeah, he's he's, yeah, he's only, only played, played seven, seven first class matches. So he's one of these like um, these like proteges. These like. Um, prodigies that's the one who are like if just been raised straight into the side yeah mm. i'm excited to see if he gets a go um i think the issue is though for him is he's just got too much competition um for me i think that we'll see the combination of nathan lyon um and ashen agar i mm. think ashen agar with his with his left arm nathan lyon with his right arm and then having two part-timers in Labashane and Smith, I think that's going to be the core of the Australian team. Um, I don't know if you think any different, Zach. Well, Nathan Lyon is obviously a very experienced, yeah. very good spinner. But you can't rely on just one spinner on in, in India. We can see that with the Indian squad. They're going to have at least Ravi Ashwin, at least Jadeja, and someone else probably called Ibi Axel Patel, who are also very experienced bowlers in India and have grown up playing on those pitches. And when you think about when England lost to India a couple winters ago, it was it was basically down to India having more experienced, better spinners and being able to counter-attack our bowlers um, when it came to the batting. And I think Australia have the batters to do that, but I don't really think they have the spinners to match India's spinners. Mm. And I think India's batsmen will be okay against Australia's spinners, maybe Nathan Lyon is the one who will have the the most success because it's all well and good having lots of spin options, which Australia generally do. But putting Todd Murphy, who's obviously an exciting talent, in for his debut against India in India, it's going to be a high pressure situation. Maybe he's got it within him to to perform. I don't know. I'm happy to be proved wrong, but I can. I just don't think they've got the, that experience in in their spinning lineup like India do, and like you almost need, and that might change how India prepare the pitch. Yes, they might prepare a dry pitch, but they'll probably provide pitches which are good to bat on as well. So that will show the skill of the Indian bowlers versus the inexperience of the Australian bowlers, or well, some of the Australian bowlers. Uh, it will be interesting yeah. to see. And I think the one weapon that Australia do have, because we mentioned Pat Cummins. But the name we didn't mention was Mitchell Stark. Yeah. And he's probably the one bowler in the world who can just take the pitch completely out of the equation and bowl those bowl those left arm um, uh, full Yorkers, which just get wickets. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see for sure. That gives me flashback as the first day of the Ashes in Australia. Mm-hmm. The last ashes, yeah. the, the first ball of the ashes. Yeah, I think Zach, it's really, it's it's really key what you just said. I just want to back up what you said. You said about the experience with um with some stats. So, of those spinners that we've mentioned, um, so Ash Nagar, Mitch Swepson, Todd Murphy, and Nathan Lyon, how many caps do you think they have between them, um, in Test? I don't know. Probably about well, if you minus Nathan Lyon, you're probably looking at. 15. So there they have between them um, 124 caps. Mm. Nathan Lyon has 115 of them. Yeah. It's not right. Okay. So nine caps between the rest of them. Mitch Trepson's played four, Ash Nagar's played five, and Todd Murphy hasn't ever played. So, and and I think, as you say, it's it's Australia sort of made a rod for their own back in the the sense that they've had one spinner in, um, in, 
literally Lyon, Nathan Lyon. Name. Nathan Lyon, thank you, um, in Gary for so long that he's been their one spinner and they've had their three paces around him and that's been their their you know their setup for the longest time. Mm. So I think that's the they've almost got so used to that um, that they haven't got any of these other spinners coming through. James, what what are your thoughts on this? I, you're bursting with thoughts, I can tell. <laughs> uh, you know what? I've got so many questions. Yeah, um, <laughs> one of which is around uh so i'm going to go back to india's sorry uh to australia's batters yeah because i think there are question marks around david warner um he has not been in very good form of late and uh you know with an amazing player like warner you know somebody as skilled as he is across all formats um when he isn't doing well in one format you can generally see that translate across different formats which is a weird one um and you know he has not performed at all in this big bash um he didn't really do well before that um i mean you know, he, got, he got he got a double ton <laughs> let, let, let's let's say that other yeah. than that okay aside from that like really good innings he has not done very well i think there is quite a big question mark around him and how well he's going to perform um in which case i could see australia shuffling their order around a little bit and because usman kawaja is in incredible form right now like the form of his uh, his life i could see them opening with kawaja and if they do need to drop warner which they might after the first test or two i could see them putting travis head at the top of the order <coughs> Oh, because he is also a good player of spin and seam. Mm. And then go with their usual two and three of um, Lamashane and Smith. And three then and their... Oh, sorry, yeah, three and four. Um, and then their number five, we could see the return of uh, Matt Renshaw into the squad. Yeah. You played in the summer, didn't you? Well, yeah, and um, he's, you know, he's an Englishman at heart. So that makes him a good player. Um, <laughs> and uh, no, he, he genuinely he could do really well, but I think what you said earlier, Benji, um, about Cameron Green that will dictate quite a lot mm. because if he can genuinely bowl like a full assortment of overs, it would mean that Australia could potentially balance their side a little better. Yeah. Ash and Agar being somewhat of an all rounder, it would mean that you know th they could have Cameron Green as their. There's one of their seam bowlers, Pat Cummins is the other, and potentially get another spinner in there, depending on conditions, or another batter. It, it give, um, gives them options, which yeah. I think they're going to need because I just I, I look at that India side, <clears throat> especially the spinners, and I just see both batting depth and bowling skill in Ravi Ashwin and Ravi Jadeja. I think they're absolutely incredible players. Yeah. I, I think they walk into any side, especially subcontinent play. Zach, who do you think? Because I think we're we're kind of assuming they're going to play a third spinner. Who do you think the third spinner is? Because for me, I have no idea what I choose. I probably because it's a toss of a coin. I probably go for Axar Patel because he he's a good batter as well. But. I think Kuldeep Yadav is so dangerous that I, I can't decide. Well, I can see them picking the leg spinner, Kuldeep, mm -hmm. um, just as a point of difference. Um, I think it depends on conditions as well, because we see how well Axar Patel bowled with the pink ball. Are they playing a pink ball test during this series? Because if they are, get Axar Patel in there, because he's yeah. awesome with it. Um, so I think it depends on conditions. It depends on the pitch. It depends if they want the extra batting. Because Axar Patel is a completely different batsman to Cordy Yadav. He's a lot better mm. at batting. So, yeah, it depends on all sorts of factors. Um, but India's selection headaches are probably a bit nicer than Australia's. Because you said about Travis Head moving up the order. And they don't really... He's not really an opening batsman. Yes, they could do it. But they haven't bought a spare opening batsman. They've got David Warner and Usman Khawaja. That's it. So they I mean, don't really have room yeah. to... like. Uh, Peter Hanscom isn't an opening batsman. No. Um, they haven't got, um, what's he called? Uh, Renshaw. He's not really an opening Renshaw's batsman. Renshaw's not. Either. They've not brought Harris. So uh, you, you, no. you're right. They've, they've, they've just, the only other option is if they promote a Smith or a Labashane. 
Yeah. Which, which I don't which think we'd see that. No. But, but I, I reckon that Scott Boland, I, in a way, I'm thinking, why did they pick him? <laughs> because mm. he's good at bowling tight. He's good at bowling in Australian conditions that he's useful, used to. He's probably good in places like New Zealand and England and Ireland. But is Scott Boland the sort of bowler you'd pick to get 20 wickets in India? You'd rather maybe bring in a, an opening batsman in his spot. So I think there are question marks over that Australian squad. There are things that I, dis- that I disagree with. Whereas I think India have genuinely, other than Safras Khan, they've picked their best possible squad. I really want to see Lance Morris play because I've heard so much about how yeah. fast this guy is. I think it's a rapid. wild thing. Like, he's he, rapid. He's been, I saw yeah. him in the BBL. Rapid, but I just don't think he'll play. Yeah, because mm. I, I, I personally would back him to take more wickets than um, Scott Boland in India. But that might be a bit of a baseball pick because I could mm. equally see Scott Boland being very frugal. Whereas... Yeah. Lance Morris, I could see going for lots of runs, but also, you know, with with searing bounces, <clears throat> taking wickets, that kind of thing. Yeah. At the end of the day, for Australia, their success comes down to how well is Steve Smith going to play against spin in the middle overs? Because yeah. if he gets out cheaply, as the best batsmen Australia have, I know uh, Labuschagne, Kawaja, Travis Head, they're all good, but if Steve Smith, he's the key wicket. If they get him out, then it kind of sends panics across the rest of the dressing room. It's like when it, when England lost Joe Root. I know at the time Joe Root was England's only batsman, really. But yeah, if they if they lose Steve Smith, if they manage to get on top of him, then that will kind of cause a bit of panic in Australia. So I think Steve Smith a lot rides on his shoulders. Um, should we do some predictions for what we think the four test match series is going to finish before we wrap up. Uh, I think we've yes. got a couple cricket nerds questions. We do have a couple of CMQs. So, yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll go through a couple of them and maybe save one or two for, for a future video, but predictions four match series. Benj, we'll come to you first. What do you reckon? Uh, three, one India. James. I'm going to go for four nil India. Wow. That's my <laughs> wash. I I don't see there being a draw, so okay. I'm not going to go nil-nil. Uh, I reckon 3-1 India. I'm with Ben. I think Australia will win, will win one. Um, I think in one of the test matches, they'll win the toss. They'll get the, the right team for the conditions and everything yeah. will kind of go in their favour. Um, As you say, Zach, the reason I say that is because I think um, Australia not having a Cameron Green who can bowl I think more than likely we'll see him cleared to bat, but not cleared to bowl, which yeah. means that they'll have to drop a batter and play an extra bowler. That'll be the Australian. They'll have to play six and five rather than, than their normal five, six, well, well, seven and seven and five is what they normally have because we've got Cameron Green who can do both. So I think that's how they'll have to go. And I think that's going to be the issue. Anyway, CNQs? Mm. Yes. So the first CNQ we've got is from uh, Ever Sunny Guy, who has said, should India really have a separate T20 team, I mean, uh, untouched with young blood? So let Rohit, Rahul, and even Kohli be banned from the India T20 team. Banned. Yeah. Banned. banned. They're, 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 yeah. They're, they're barred. So have a completely young, fresh team, you know, with the likes of Gil. Um, as as the T twenty side, and then let the old boys carry on with the test before they shrivel up and go and be commentators. I don't think so because I think having a team of young people is what the A teams are for. That's my opinion on that. Yeah, I really agree. I, I think they you want your best players for all the time, and I understand why Stokes has left England's one day squad, but at the same time, I can see him coming back for the World Cups because you want your best players for when it counts. Yeah, absolutely. I think experience is far more valuable than a lot of people realise. Yeah. That mm. cool head um, and the the voice of reason in amongst you know, the chaos of a T20 match is is really, really important. The next CNQ that we've got is from an absolute legend of the game. <laughs> um, it's PD, 
And he said, thoughts on Mickey Arthur's online coaching with Pakistan. I don't get it. Neither I have, do I. I, I, I have no thought because I, I, I haven't heard about this. So if, if, I, if any of you guys know what's going on. Yeah, basically, I, I'm out, Mickey I'm out Arthur is coaching Pakistan online. And um, I don't know why. Maybe it's because he's got lots of other commitments or. Yeah, but I, I think it. It fits the Pakistan way of being a bit radical. Mm, but I don't know how it's going to help because normally when you see a picture of a coach for a team, you see him with like the baseball glove on mm. and he's doing throwdowns in the nets, having one-to-ones with players. Whereas online, it kind of, it's like he's an online counsellor or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, just, <laughs> I, I don't see me. how anybody would be able to deliver a full, like active coaching role online i don't think i feel like works. it can't be the best way of doing it imagine no. imagine the the little laptop in the corner of the dressing room being like baba what were you playing at <laughs> yeah get, getting the dressing down just the pakistan players have just put them on mute <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah even removed from the chat yeah <laughs> right um the next one is and next and final CNQ. So if you would like your CNQ to be included next episode, leave it in the comments with the hashtag CNQ at the start. Uh, it's from the same legend of the game, PD. And he said, in my opinion, both as a batter, he didn't say that. He said both as a bowler and a student of the game, bowling a front foot no ball in T20 is a crime. I feel it shows I the bowlers it responsibility Sorry, and their lack of discipline. Do you boys share the same sentiment? Sentiment. I agree. Uh, my yeah. only exception to this is uh, in nets. I think in nets, front foot no ball should be never called yeah. out, especially when the said person has never bowled in front foot no ball playing on grass ever. That's all. Right. So that that was a very personal <laughs> example from Benji's life because me and Zach always call him out for bowling, bowling off 19 yards in the nets. <laughs> um, but going back to this CNQ, uh, <laughs> I, I don't think it's that much of a crime, right? I, I, I think it's an absolute, uh, <laughs> shocker when it's a spinner, mm. but when it's a seam bowler, I think it actually is somewhat excusable, not continuously, but I think as a seam bowler, they, they, especially as a fast bowler, where your point of difference is your pace, you should be pushing that line. Because uh, I can remember an article on this a, a, a little while ago. It was talking about why Bumra, Jasprit Bumra, seems so fast. And it's because of his release point. It's in front of him. Where, like most people are releasing above there, Bumra's, because of his weird straight arm, hyperflexed elbow, all that good stuff, his release point is actually quite a bit further forward mm. than a lot of other bowlers Wait, and it actually they, they realize that it adds like another two three miles an hour to his pace wow. Wow. which when you're already clocking in at about 90 that that does make quite a big difference so the difference between a bowler being that far behind the line or having you know that much of their heel behind the line Mm. could be the difference between another, you know, three miles an hour of perceived pace from the batter. And that is what can really make a difference in rushing them into a shot. So yeah. for I that reason, for... I'm going to say mm. not, you know, give, give, give the seam bowlers a bit of a break. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think for a spinner, awful. Never should happen. Wait. They've got no reason to be doing that. But for a seamer, mm. I would say the worst type of no ball is a beamer. Because that shows lack of discipline. That shows you've bowled a bad delivery. The ball stepped out of your hand. You've lost control of it. Dangerous too. I think actually, I think we should crack down more on beamers than front foot no balls, in my opinion. I think I think you've got to expect no balls to happen. It's a part of the game. It's going to happen for the seamers. Like you said, spinners, it shouldn't really be happening. Mm -hmm. But a seamer going for a low full toss, it can sometimes slip above the waist. Uh, likewise, a seamer trying to go all out and push that line will bowl and no ball but you tr if you have let's say your average one no ball per game right it's gonna happen whereas if you if you're doing more than one no ball a game then that's extra free balls that's extra free hits that's extra opportunities for the batsman to just creep ahead of you um so i reckon 
you want to be and if you've got say three four fast bowlers if you're bowling no balls you want them to to be averaging one every three or four games if you're bowling a no ball every game you got to change what you're doing yeah. uh, because otherwise right. you're costing your team but anyway that's everything it's been great talking to you about the Australia India series and other things. So make sure you, you click subscribe, make sure you like follow us on social media as well. There's a link tree in the description. All our social medias are there. We are getting more active on social media. So please give us a, a follow on those and also make sure that you, um, when you're out and about and you think we can't watch the cricket nerds, that's fine. You can listen to us, get us on Spotify, Apple podcasts, right? We can be talking to you. 24 7 which i know is what you want so <laughs> is it <laughs> said if, no if you, one ever if you want to punish somebody you can you can li- have our voices coming at them 24 <laughs> 7 um but yeah it's been it's been a pleasure uh thank you so much and leave your predictions and comments in the in uh, the comments below but thank you very much and we'll see you later